What's up, guys? It's me, your badass host, Draven, and welcome to another episode of our Pokemon Sword and Shield walk through the Isle of Armor series, Shield version. Okay, so, in our last episode, we managed to complete all the chores that Master Mustard had for all of us right here, and now, he has uh, entrusted us with a Kafu right here. As you can see, the little man right here behind us, that's Kafu. He's a pretty cool Pokemon. Yeah, he, he's very, very cool. He's shy, just a little shy, but, you know... He's a, little, he's a little something right here. Now, Kafu was given to us at a specific level, and the mission for us was to actually get this Pokemon to a very nice level. Get him to love us a little. You know, that whole thing. And then after that, get ready to just destroy everybody here. Now, if you guys have already taken a look at my Pokemon Sword version, you guys probably know where this is going. Right here, we're going to be doing the dark version of Kafu going into Urshifu. Now... Before we do anything, guys, we're going to be going straight to the Diglett person because, uh, yeah, we kind of, yeah, we kind of went in and, uh, and, and, and got ourselves a Diglett all over from the, the Isle of Armor. Now, off screen, I did go around and, and get all these Diglets, man. It was ridiculous how and where you had to find them. Uh, if you guys want to know exactly where the locations of these Diglets are, the, the link is right there onto the description. It's not my video, it's a different video from another YouTuber, so make sure to, you know, uh, go by to his channel and just boom. Say Draven, I uh, led you right there, but 151 Diglets are going to be found right there onto that video. Uh, not only that, but I caught myself a few Pokemon, and, well, as you probably can already tell, I actually... Gave the majority of my rare candies to Cub Fu to get to level 80 because, well, hey, it's going to be a while if you wanted to train this Pokemon up. As you can see, it does have the same moves that, you know, I would have in Sword version and all that stuff. And before we do anything, let's just go ahead and talk to this guy. He's going to give us quite a few Pokemon right here. So, oh, hello! Thanks to you, 150 more Diglett came back to me. One of them has evolved into a Dugtrio. The number of Diglett that came back is five, so he's going to give us a Pokemon, and yes, it's going to be from Alola. We are going to be getting the Alolan Meowth. Yes, Alolan Meowth, guys. The Dark-type Pokemon right here. Now, I'm not going to give it a nickname nor anything. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at its summary. Alolan Meowth, as you guys already know, is a Dark-type Pokemon. It does have quite a few moves. Rattled, Dark, Ghost, and Bug-type moves scare the Pokemon into its speed stat. And, well, as you can see, being a dark type, it has to start off with uh, normal type attacks right here. So, we're going to be uh, putting this guy into the Poke, uh, into the box, in the Pokemon uh, box and everything. Now, the next goal is 10. Now, there are quite a few Pokemon that you can actually get from this guy. I think it's five specific Pokemon. Right here, we're going to be getting a Slowpoke, a uh, Cantonian Slowpoke right here. We're not going to give it a nickname. But there is something interesting about this Slowpoke is that it is holding a King's Rock, so you can actually use that to evolve it into a uh, into a Slow King at some point. This Pokemon, of course, is Water and Psychic type, so it's nothing too different from its uh, Galarian, uh, you know, its Galarian cousin or or brother or sister or whatever. It just evolves into a different kind of uh, Pokemon right here. So the next one will be 20, and from 20, he will actually give you. In Alolan Vulpix, which many of you guys should already know, is an Ice-type Pokemon to the region. And let's go right ahead and take a look at this Pokemon right here. As you can see, it is an Ice-type Pokemon. does have Snow Warning, which summons a Hailstorm in a battle. And it does have Powder Snow as its beginning attack. Eventually, if you want to evolve this Pokemon into a Ninetales, it will actually need a, uh, an Ice Stone to actually evolve this guy. The next goal will be 30, and after that, you will actually be getting an Alolan Slow, uh, Sandshrew, which it's also a, uh, which is also a uh, an Ice type Pokemon. So now it's going to be added to the uh, to the Pokédex right here. It's both Ice and Steel type, two feet four inches, 88 pounds. The Alolan form. It lives in snowy mountains and southern islands. When a blizzard rolls in, this Pokemon hunkers down in the snow to avoid getting blown away. Now, I'm not going to give this guy a nickname, and we need to take a look at this Pokemon right here. If you guys don't remember, in my Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu walkthrough, I actually used this guy. Or Alolan Sandslash. I think I did, yeah. Either or. It is a very great, like, it is a very good attacker. A physical attacker, I should say. And a very unique uh, typing right here. So, as you can see, it does have Slush Rush, boosts the speed in a Hailstorm. 
And let's begin attacks. It's pretty simple right there, guys. Very good Pokemon to actually have, too. So now, the next goal will be 40 Pokemon. And by getting 40 Pokemon, you will actually be getting an Alolan Raichu, which many of you guys already know is both a Psychic and Electric type Pokemon. And, uh, well, since I didn't do it in my Sword version, I might as well do it right here. Yes. I am going to nickname this Pokemon. It's going to be called Puka. Yes. Now, I do not know... Yeah, I don't think that we got into that point yet where I evolved my, my Pikachu in Pokemon, uh, my Pokemon Moon walkthrough, but we're obviously going to evolve it into... It. We're obviously going to evolve into an Alolan Raichu. So as you can see right here, Alolan Raichu is both electric and psychic type, a very unique typing. And its special attack, it's his main, uh, main uh, attribute right here. Now, its ability is Surge Surfer, which doubles the Pokemon speed stat in an electric terrain. And right there, then, you can actually teach this guy psychic, ty psychic type moves, since in this game right here, you can actually have unlimited TMs. Well, TRs and all that stuff. TRs are not unlimited, but you know what I mean, guys. Now, the next goal is 50, and uh, this guy will actually give us an Alolan Marowak, which many of you guys already know is both a ghost and fire type Pokemon. A damn unique typing, which, you know, I'm actually glad that they did in the Alolan game. So as you can see, this is the very first uh, Marowak that I have on, uh, on file. It's the Bone Keeper Pokemon. The cursed flames that light up the bone carried by the Pokemons are set to cause both mental and physical pain that will never fade. Now, I believe in the sword version uh, entry, I think it it actually does a dance to honor its fallen comrades. Now, here we go with, uh, let's see, let's go with a no, and let's go with a summary right here. And as you can see, Fire and Ghost, its ability is Rock Head, which protects the Pokemon from recoil damage. And well, this, this Marowak looking pretty good right here because it does have a Flame Wheel attack, stomp, Stomping Tantrum, Hex attack, Fling, you know. You can learn quite a few uh, few moves right here. So let's go send it straight to the box. And, well, let's see what happens when we get 75 Diglett. And, yes, we are getting in another Alolan Pokemon, which is Alolan Executor. Which this guy right here is a, is a pretty tall, a, a tall task right here. It is both a grass and dragon type Pokemon, 35 feet, 916 pounds of whatever it is, coconut damage right here. Now, this psychic, uh, this Pokemon's psychic powers aren't as strong as they once were. The head on Executor's tail scans surrounding areas with weak telepathy. So, that right there pretty much says that, like, you can still use psychic type Pokemon or psychic moves on this Pokemon, but, yeah, it's not going to be as strong. Now, in the... Sword version entry, it actually, it's because of the sun that it gets its true form right here. Now, let's go right ahead and take a look at its summer right here, guys. You know I'm talking a lot. And from what it looks like, let's see. Its attack, its special attack and physical attack, is they're basically the same, except its physical attack right here, because of its, uh, its mood, it's going to be a little bit different. It does have the ability Harvest. May create another berry once it's used. And, uh, well, like I said, Psychic type moves, Grass type moves. Now that it has a Dragon type uh, capability, it will be a very good Pokemon to actually have. Now, let's go right ahead and send it to the box. And move on to the next Pokemon gift, which is 100 Pokemon. Now, this one's going to be unique. 100 Pokemon gets you this. A Poplio. Now, depending on what your starter type is, that will be the Pokemon type that you will be getting as a gift for 100 Diglets uh, found. If you guys haven't seen my, my Sword version, I got the Grass type Pokemon Rowlet. So, right here we're getting uh, Poplio because of Deadshot. Let's go ahead and take a look at its summer right here. So, Poplio, the uh, Water type Pokemon. It does have liquid voice, all sound based moves, and uh, water type moves, and all that stuff. Now, I could have, I should nickname this guy Joker because, yeah, he's also my Pokemon Moon Walkthrough. Very good Pokemon, and uh, let's see. I can't nickname him right now, but I'll eventually nickname him some point. Whatever. All right, so now let's go with the 150, uh, 51 Diglets, and we've got all of them, guys. So, ah, including this one that just came back, the number of Diglets that come back is. Wait, what? 
All 151 Diglett came back? Thank you so much. Thank you, all my Diglett, or all my Diglett have come back. He's back. I think this Diglett is saying that you're worthy of its respect because you found them all. Diglett Theater. What? You want to go together with this trainer because of uh, you respect them? D. Hmm. Feel a bit sad, but... If that's what it wants, I'll respect its wish. Please take good care of my Diglets. And here we have the final gift, guys, and that is an Alolan Diglett, which is both a ground and steel type Pokemon. A very good Pokemon also to have on your team if you're playing Pokemon Sun and Moon. No, I'm not nicknaming this guy, so let's go straight for the summary. And like I said, ground and steel type, uh, very speedy Pokemon. Not much of a special attacker, but its physical attacks will actually do pretty good. Now, it does have Sand Force as its ability. Boosts the power of Rock, Ground, and Steel-type uh, moves in the in Sandstorm. And, well, as you can see, Astonish, Mudslap, Bulldoze, Sucker Punch. All these moves are, are, are within its grasp right here. So, we're going to send this thing to the box. And that right there concludes our little Diglett summary. Now, again, if you guys want to see where you can find all these Diglets, the link is on the description. Can't remember the name of the uh, of the channel, but say a, say a thanks to this person or whatever the name is uh, for finding all of the diglets. That way, it can make it easier for you guys to find. It literally took me about like an hour to find all the diglets thanks to this video. So here we are in the master dungeon after you know getting our Pokemon up to a level 80, and well, there is a little something that we need to do. We need to talk to this guy, and he's like, "What's this? What's this? Let's see how you and Kafu are getting along." Bimor. Good, good. You two are just the best of friends, aren't you? Kafu's really become more confident. How wonderful. I dare say, I think you're both ready. Follow me, you two. Okay, all right. We're going to go. We're going to see and see what's going on right here. We're going to go follow him. Hopefully, we get like a black belt or something. I think we already have a black belt. I don't know. Let's see. Can't see because of my backpack. dum dee dum da da la la da and no, I'm wearing a white belt. Oh. Whew! I guess it's a good spot as any. Now then, Draven and Kung Fu, if you want to become stronger, there are special training grounds just for Kung Fu. Prepare yourselves for the Tower of the Two Fists. Oh damn! The blue tower is the wa the Tower of Waters, and the red tower is the Tower of Darkness. Choose wisely, since you'll only be able to climb one of those two towers. Kung Fu's side, uh, fi fighting style will change depending on the tower you choose and the type it gets. Will change as well. Think carefully. Each tower five stories tall, and each floor has a tough opponent waiting for you. Make sure you have, or uh, make sure you level up Kung Fu properly before you uh, try climbing up. You can reach both towers by heading through the forest of focus. You might even be, uh, be able to find a shortcut if you ride or your bicycle across the river. I'm really looking forward to uh, when you two make it uh, to the top of one of those two towers. It's going to be so exciting. Hmm. You don't say. Hmm. The towers, right? Alright, we're going to do the towers then. Anywho. Now, you guys have seen my sword version. We obviously went to the Tower of Water. Now we're going to be going into the Tower of Darkness right here. And it shouldn't be that hard to actually find right here, guys. Now, there is a few things that you guys need to know. Uh, you need to train your Pokemon or your Kafu up to level 70 in order to get the, get inside the tower. Uh, I obviously have my Kafu up to level 80 because, well, you know, you know me. I kind of like to overlevel my Pokemon. I don't like losing. That's pretty much what it is. And, uh, let's see, what else? Going into the Tower of Darkness, just like the Tower of Water, it will be type-specific. Meaning that the trainers there will act obviously use uh, Pokemon to their uh, to the typing that it's you know attributed to. Like in the Tower of Water, they all have Water type Pokemon. So if you need, if you guys need to actually get by into that location, make sure to have an Electric type move ready for the for your Cub Food to learn. I obviously use Thunder Punch just to get by there. Now in the Tower of Darkness right here, it's obvious that you know they have Dark type Pokemon. So might as well. Like, we already have the fighting type move uh, right there, ready, uh, ready and waiting for us. It's just, it would be nice 
to add in an extra move here and there just in case something were to go wrong uh, especially when you're when you're gonna go up against a specific uh, trainer that may have the opposite Pokemon so because of that let's see there's gonna be a little bit of a change right here now I'm gonna actually sort my actually not sort my favorite but I'm gonna sort them out and we're gonna be finding a move right here that we need to actually get by well for the long run but we can actually use brick break but we already have uh, we already have the move that we need but I do need an extra move that can actually help us out in the long run right here so actually you know what I'm gonna wait for it until afterwards let's just go straight up into the Tower of Darkness Yes, there, look at that. We have some pretty interesting Pokemon. We've never even been into this area right here before. I have off-screen to actually try and get myself, uh, you know, all these, uh, all these Diglett that were hiding around here. I believe there was like nine of them right here, alone. So, here we are, Tower of Dark Darkness, get off our bike. And, like always, we do need to actually put our, all our Pokemon, except Kofu, back into the PC. So, that's what we're going to do right now. And, wow, we have quite a few, uh, huh, we used quite a few, uh, quite a few, uh, boxes right here. I think I captured more Pokemon in, uh, sh in Shield version than I did in the Sword version, so, before we do anything, let's go ahead and, uh, take a look at that. Let's see. Yeah, I think I did capture a little bit more there in, in this version than I did in the other version. Uh, as you guys can probably see, I did capture, or I did evolve Leonardo. So we do have them at level 36. And then, uh, oh, there you are. Look at that. Marcel is waiting for us there. So I just got to make sure that, you know, I have them here just in case. And, well, let's see. Like in the other version, let's go right ahead and equip it with something. It, it could be useful right here in the long run, too. Uh, let's see. Type. Okay. So we do have a little bit more experience candy and all that stuff because... I think it needed less, a little bit less than, the, than than what we needed right here. So, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so, let's see. Ah, here we go, Rocky Helmet. Gonna do the same thing. I know, no, I, I know, guys, it's pretty much the same shit that we did in the, in the last version, but it is what it is. So, here we are in the Tower of Darkness. Look at that. And this is actually my first time going through this. Now, in the separate uh, shield version that I was playing, I actually go into the Tower of Water. That's how I knew right away to uh, just teach a Thunder Punch and all that stuff. So, here we are. Hello, Draven. Master has already sent word. This is the Tower of Darkness. It's a training ground where Kung Fu will learn the true essence of darkness. If you raise Kung Fu to at least level 70, its training will go smoothly. Once you enter the tower, you won't be able to leave until the, you best the five opponents or are defeated yourself. What's uh, more, the tower you didn't choose will be closed forever. Now, do you wish to forsake the path of water and uh, follow in the path of darkness? Yes, I do. Remember, there will be no turning back once you have made your choice. Are you sure you want to climb the tower of darkness? Yes, I am. I can tell your heart is set. The best of luck to you. Okay. Alrighty. Here we go. It is time. So here we are in the Tower of Darkness. Five trainers in all. Four of them. Four of them are basically, you know, students just like I am. And the last one will be the master himself. Now, here we are. Looking at this guy. He's like, walking uh, Walking only a pet life will not help broaden your perspective. You must learn to use both the light and the dark. Let me show you how. Okay. Alrighty. So here we go, the Master do uh, Dojo student will be battling us, and he is coming out with a Zerua now. I believe off-screen I did capture myself a Zerua. It's pretty fun. Very, very fun Pokemon, but look at this. We do have a move ready to kick some butt right here, and that is close combat. Now remember, there is five points to this close combat, so... Yes, just be aware, just be aware that, you know, you can only use it a limited amount of time. And just like that, we defeated the next trainer right here. Okay, impressive. You can now proceed to the second floor. Alrighty, let's go into the second floor, see what we are all about right here. We're going to be going up against uh, this later right here. Let's see what kind of words she has to say for us. Those strong in the darkness are also strong in the light. 
I have traveled the path of darkness and perfected my strength in the light. Behold! Okay, alright. Here we go, Master Dojo. The student will want to battle us, and she will be coming out with a Scraggy right here. So we got a double weakness. And, uh, should be no problem for us. Here we go. Close combat for the win. Look at that. Oh, yes. Scraggy, just getting, just getting his butt kicked. Yes, sir. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, alrighty, alrighty. And just like that, yes, we have uh, overshadowed her, like she says us. Okay. Let us move on to the third floor right here. Should be easy. Wouldn't be that hard. Now, let's go right ahead and talk to this guy. And let's see what he's all about. We're all... We're all but lost travelers, feeling our way through the darkness around us. The results of battles are hitting in the darkness until the battles are completed. That is the beauty of battling. Yeah, don't say. Okay. Here we go. Another battle. And here comes an Inke. Now, this is a different Pokemon from, uh, from uh, the last three that we've actually battled. This guy is both a Psychic and Dark-type. So we're going to have to go about it in a different way. Let's go ahead and start using different moves. And bam, it hits it pretty hard. Go ahead, Ink. Go ahead and use that nice Slash because, uh, yes, I do have that Rock Head ready and willing to go. And, yes, let's go with a Headbutt attack just to finish this guy off. Two moves for the win. Say goodbye to Ink. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So there we go. We have defeated the next master right here. Not the master, but the next, uh, well, the next trainer right here, I should say. I don't know. I'm probably just, like, not really focused. Okay, so going into the next floor, I wonder what kind of dark type Pokemon we have right here. I want to see. Let's see. We've already, uh, they, they're probably going to throw, like, another monkey wrench right here because, you know, I mean, dark types, dark types can get, I don't know. They can be blended with other types right here, too, so... Here we go with a Crocker Rock, and this guy is a Dark and Ground type, so it is weak against Fighting type Pokemon. And uh, I see a weakness right there. So here comes the close combat attack. Yes, this Crocker Rock was not ready. It wasn't ready. Uh uh uh. Okay. Alrighty. So there's another experience points, and we have defeated uh, another master right here, master client or something like that. All right. I kind of feel like that close combat is going to bite me in the ass. So, let's see. Yes, we can actually use some some items right here. So, let's go right ahead and see if we actually have, like, an ether or something like that. Yes, we do. And let's go ahead and give that to a close combat. That way, that way everything will be taken care of in the next room. So, as you guys probably already know, this is the fifth floor. We're going to be seeing the uh, the Master Mustard right here. And, well, he's waiting for us. And, like I said in uh, my sword version. Watch this. I, lo I, love, the I love the steps. <laughs> Anywho, here's Master Mustard waiting for us. And, well, let's see what he has to say. There you are. I figured you'd choose the Tower of Darkness, so I decided to wait for you here. Draven, Kafu. You both have done well to get this far. Boo bear! Your final opponent is a little old me. It's been a while since the last time I battled like this, but I think you can handle it. A steam or a stream too clear is avoided by a fish Pokemon. We all need some darkness in ourselves. Let me be the one to teach you a final lesson on the essence of darkness. Okay, alrighty. Here we go, going up against Master Mun Man Bun right here. Holy crud. Master Man Bun looking like Man Bun himself, and he right here is coming out with his very own Kofu. And, well, it's going to be an interesting one right here. Look at this. He needs to get serious. I am to take you on. This guy's like, wow, owns your senses in this battle, sharpen you now. Show me how you can grow. Holy crud, man. His eyes got so big right there. So let's go right ahead and just, uh, yeah, let's just go and destroy this guy with an aerial ace attack right here. And, uh, well, look at this. <laughs> His Kung Fu is more confident than mine, but here comes the aerial ace attack. 
and that right there is going to take a lot. Holy crap. So it's a lot faster than my Pokemon. And, oh crud, I think we're going to lose this one right here. Wow, so it intentionally lost this match to us. Oh my god, okay, so there it is, guys. <laughs> so it looks like, yeah, they lost. They lost intentionally. I, I really don't feel like we won. <laughs> oh, wow. So there it is, guys. We have defeated Master Man Bun himself. And he's like, you young folk grow so fast. It never ceases to amaze me. Wow. Wow, uh, I kind of feel like you lost to me on purpose. I kind of feel that way. I'm pretty sure many of you guys would feel that same way, too. <laughs> He's like, well, most impressive. Alrighty, so, hey, man. Nux me. That's right. Yeah, buddy, look at that. Look at this guy celebrate. Oh, my God, look at that. He's confident. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. So... After defeating Master Man Bun right here, Kofu is ready to take on the next challenge. He's like, ha, 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 I knew you were worthy of my trust, Draven. You have done well, very well indeed, in raising Kofu to this level of strength. Leon was once my best student a long time ago. He, too, attempted this trial, but he never made it to either tower. He got lost along the way. Ha, 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 now that it's finally time for Kofu to evolve. Go and show Kafu the scroll of darkness. Kafu is ready now. Okay. Alrighty, so it is time to read the uh these scrolls right here for Kafu. And this right here will enable Kafu to evolve into its other form, the dark type form, which will we eventually find out like what exactly it is. So here it is. Do you want to show Kafu the scroll of darkness to evolve? Yes, I do. Yes. Okay, so Kafu looking Burm It's learning its language right there and look at that. Kafu is a uh, bear. Okay. Alrighty, so just like that guys, we're getting another evolution, and that is Kafu evolving into its dark type form. Look at this guy looking like a Super Saiyan himself. Here we have Urshifu. Pretty badass Pokemon, to be uh, to be quite honest, guys. So here it is, guys. Urshifu, the uh, Wushu Pokemon, the single strike style. It is dark and fighting type, so it does have, you know, a, a bit of a weakness to fighting type. But as you can see right here in its Pokedex entry, inhibiting the mountains of a distant region, this Pokemon races across sheer cliffs, training its lace and refining its move. Alrighty. Okay. And just like that, it is going to be learning Wicked Blow. So which move should we help it uh, forget? I kind of want to know what this Wicked Blow is. So Wicked Blow is a little bit stronger. It, the user having mastered the Dark Style strikes the uh, target with Fierce Blow. This attack always results in a uh, critical hit. So this is a pretty good attack, which I'm going to take away from... Uh, I'm going to take Headbutt away or... Yeah, Headbutt away just for this reason. So there we go, one, two, and three. There we go, we got ourselves Wicked Blow. And, well, behold, before you stands Urshifu. Sure to be unyielding armor that will shatter any blade turned against it. And it's mastered the, the style of darkness. Bedark. Oh damn, Bedark. This is a new one right here. <laughs> You've certainly grown, haven't you? And to think not too long ago, you would have ran and hid behind me at the moment you got scared. Indeed. No matter how old I get, witnessing someone grow always makes brings joy to my uh, heart. Draven, Urshifu, thank you both from the bottom of my heart. Oh, I almost forgot. I gave this to anyone who has faced me when I was, when I was taking the battle seriously. And we get ourselves a, a Master, or Master Mustard's uh, League card right there. Now then, let's head back to the dojo. All right, all right, look at that. Vincent McMahon style, such talent. In strength, perhaps, the time has come. Oh, wow, I wonder what that means. I really wonder what that means right there. Okay, so we have covered that portion of this situation right here, and, well, I'm excited, guys. I really am excited because the next few episodes, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be something that uh, worthwhile. So, 
Here we are back into the dojo and just wait the next episode will get a little interesting it's gonna get a little long and you guys probably already know what, what's coming so thank you guys again for watching this episode i will be back for another one pretty soon right here so stay tuned guys i'll see you guys next time